In this problem, we are given the volume of the Atlantic Ocean as being 3.55 times 10 to the 8th cubic kilometers. What mass of silver sulfide could be dissolved in this volume of pure water? Okay, so we're assuming we have a volume the size of the Atlantic Ocean, but it's pure water. Um, and we're given the KSP for the silver sulfide, and we want to know how much of this could we dissolve in that ocean. So here we have an insoluble common. It's actually quite insoluble, um, as is indicated by the very small KSP. And um, we want to know what mass could be dissolved in this volume. So first of all, let's, uh, let's find what this volume is in liters, because we'll need uh, to know that for our uh, molarity, because we'll be using molarity. So let's do a quick conversion here. 3.55 times 10 to the 8th cubic kilometers. And in one cubic kilometer, there are how many cubic meters? Okay, well, there's a thousand meters in one uh, kilometer. So that would be 10 to the third but then we're cubing that, so 3 times 3 is 10 to the ninth cubic meters. Okay, and then uh, now let's get this down to liters. And a liter is 1 cubic uh, decimeter. Okay, so if this cube represents a, a cubic meter, then we would uh, divide this into uh, 10 parts and on each side and then that cube would be one liter all right so one tenth so you have 10 10 uh, liters times 10 times 10 there's a thousand liters in one cubic meter okay so that is our conversion there. Now that will get us into liters. All right. So what we find is um, 3.55 times 10 to the 8th plus 9 plus 3, um, which is times 10 to the 20th. Okay. So there's our volume in liters. That will be useful in a little bit. All right, so now let's uh, see what our solubility equation looks like. We have this solid salt, and it is in equilibrium in the water with the um, ions in aqueous solution. So it'll look like this, all right? Of course, we have to balance the equation when we're dealing with salts we always have to remember to balance that um, especially I mean we always balance it but quite often with acids and bases and such it's all one to one all right and there's our KSP the KSP of course is equal to if we put that in terms of the ions that'll be the concentration of the silver ions squared times the concentration of the sulfide ions. Okay, so um, what we want to do is find out what the equilibrium concentrations would be. So we're going to assume since we're starting with pure water, there's nothing uh, there, and so their change is going to be a positive x and at equilibrium we'll have x. Okay, I made a, a mistake here. I have to put in that 2. Okay, carry that down, and so we'll have twice the concentration for our silver ions. So now let's put that in here. We have 2x for the silver, and we're squaring that, and then x for the sulfide. Um, and this will be 2 times 2 is 4x cubed. Alright, so this um, equals 10 t 
uh, 8 times 10 to the negative 51. Uh, if we divide that by 4, that'll be 2 times 10 to the negative 51. Take the cube root of that value, and what you end up with is... one point um, two six times ten to the um, negative seventeenth okay so that is my concentration of the sulfide ions and if we multiplied that um, by two we would get the silver ion concentration Okay, but what we want to find is the mass of this silver sulfide that can be dissolved. All right, so what this is saying is here's the concentration I can get it to. That would be the saturation concentration. And I have this volume, the volume of the ocean. Okay, so moles per liter, that's molarity. So what I can say is this would be moles of sulfide per liter. Of course, that's the same as the moles of silver sulfide. So I'll go ahead and write that out as moles of silver sulfide per liter of the solution. And I have 3.55 times 10 to the 20th liters. All right, so that will give me the moles of silver sulfide. Um, and uh, that, that number of moles of silver sulfide, then I will just multiply that by the molar mass of silver sulfide, which um, is going to be, uh, let's see here, we have silver is 107.8 eight seven and we have two of those and then uh, sulfide is 32.066 so total we have 247.8 all right so here we have 247 point eight grams to one mole okay so I'm just uh, continuing this in one um, sequence and what we end up with here we have 1.26 times 10 to the negative 17th times 3.55 times 10 to the 20th and then times 247.8, right? And I end up with uh, 1.1 times 10 to the sixth grams, all right? So uh, this would be, um, oh, and, and really, I since I'm at the end, I should reduce this down to one significant figure. So that would be one times 10 to the sixth grams or one megagram, which is equal to one metric ton, okay? Um, so you can put a metric ton of silver sulfide and it will dissolve completely um, in, uh, in an elat and a volume of water the size of the Atlantic Ocean. All right. Now, of course, if you tried to put silver sulfide in uh, in the Atlantic, the actual Atlantic already has a certain amount of these ions, and so that would uh, minimize the amount of uh, the solid that would actually dissolve, because these would not be zero. You'd have some there, so that would prevent the um, uh, the silver sulfide from dissolving. 
um, at least to the to the same extent. Okay, but if you had pure water, you'd have a metric ton that would be able to dissolve a large amount just due to the sheer volume, uh, extreme volume of the Atlantic.